Yeah, he's winning every fight. Oh, oh, oh man. Yeah, that dude had 17 experience. Let's see how much experience he has after the after those series of fights. I think we just about took care of our native mercenary problem. I love it when a log looks that good at the top. All these victories. We got a our, uh, expert lumberjack, which is probably that. Oh yeah, that the converted native. We'll have him do some work here for now. Why not? We need it anyway in order to supply our carpentry needs. We really need another carpenter here, actually. I would move this free colonist to do it, but he's been working to become a master roper, and I'd rather him continue to do that. Oh, this is a great general. That's right. This is not a admiral. Right. Okay. Get on that damn ship. <laughs> Good thing the carrot didn't leave yet. Let's actually send them over to Fort Cod in that case. Because I need the military first. They need to be as effective as they can be. Look at all these damn orcas. They would really harass fishing boats if we were using them. So you do need to defend to you do need to defend your shipping. Not your shipping, but your your fishing and your shipping. Let's check out how much XP this dude has. Where are you at? 21. Very good indeed. You should be able to get Ranger 3 now, right? Or not, because you're not led by a great general specifically. We're just going to go ahead and quickly check to see what the requirements are for Ranger 3. You need a Ranger 2 and a great general specifically. Okay. Ranger 3 also lets you attack multiple times per turn. That's just too bad. So yeah, this dude will never actually be able to get Ranger 3 because he's not specifically led by a great general. He's led by a brave lieutenant. And we got another brave lieutenant. This one already has a... Let's see here. A brave lieutenant, which means I need to attach that brave lieutenant to somebody else. This guy has... My goodness, he already has a brave lieutenant. Let's attach him to the conquistador. That makes a lot of sense in my mind. Let's crush this dude next. And that'll be the end of our little mercenary problem. Oh my god, another brave lieutenant. Wow. I'm gonna have to push that location to defend it from the Carib. Let's, let's just, let's all push that direction, that's fine. This guy, what shall we give him? I don't want to do storm attack, but he's all about fighting outside in the forest. So we want to increase that. Maybe surgeon? Now let's get medic on somebody else. Now that we've taken care of the mercenary problem, we can actually start dealing specifically with the villages that are closest to our settlements. And just push the crib back that way. But in it, might not be a bad idea. Plus 20% versus melee and gunpowder units. I like the idea of bayonet. Let's go with that. Which means we're also doing bayonet on this one. That makes them super powerful. This militia has a promotion as well. What shall we use him for? Well, do I want to attach... I think I want to attach this brave lieutenant to the ranger here. Or I could save him for the militia. Turn the militia into another super ranger. I can do the same thing with this ranger though. And it could be like a, an even better one actually. Yeah, let's just go with that one. Let's give the brave lieutenant to this ranger. And he shall get... Let's see how many promotions you are going to get. Just one. Okay. Maybe we should give him medic. <laughs> now let's do with a ranger two for double movement. Sounds good to me. We'll push him forward too? Yeah, let's push him forward as well. He can get back fast enough. Now this militia was intended to be a settlement defense militia. So I should go ahead and give, I should give him minute man. And then put him back on the boat. Send them back towards the west, because I want to get this settlement up and running here pretty soon. And now I have to go back and fix Fort Cod completely. It won't take longer though. Yeah, I was considering actually making the distillery in Fort Cod, because we do have access to some savannah here that we can turn into sugar plantations if we'd like to do so. Right, right, right. In that case, I will keep the distillery here. And I might actually work on a distiller's house after the armory. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll queue that up. Why not? That'll remind me for the future. Everybody else, I don't think they're going to be much use doing anything else. So we will unfortunately have them stand around temporarily. We have blood red. The sun burns in the far horizon, turning the sunset prairie red. 
Silently, your cavalry rides across the plain. The men have no eye for the beauty of the landscape. They are already thinking with cold fury of the coming dawn when they will riot against the enemy city. Unprotected by ramparts, far from the battlefront, it believes itself safe from the distant horrors of war. But with your cavalry, you dispatch death to all corners of the new world, whose beauty and wealth should belong to one master only, you. I think this is talking about the scout that we just got a ridiculous veteran 5 promotion on. This one. Yeah, this dude has so many promotions. Look at that list in the bottom left. Skarmisher 1, 2, 3. Explorer, veteran. Really, really impressive stuff. Yeah, here's a Lion Infantry. They have 10 strength instead of 8 strength. It's actually a decent amount of increase. I'm going to push the Conquistador back with the Brave Lieutenant as well. And the other guys are just going to stand in place for a moment and heal. They need some more health if they can even think about taking on that settlement. Position for a little cotton village. Let's go ahead and get that built. Let's call this city Threadbare. It's going to be all about cloth, dyeing cloth, etc. To start it off, we might need a pier for food. Actually, let's do a chapel because we have a disillusioned missionary with us at the moment. Oh my goodness, we can't even start building, building because we don't have lumber. Right, 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 right. I'll have him just sit there for the moment and I'll get some lumber shipped in in a bit. Got the brave lieutenant on the conquistador. Let's see how many promotions. I think it's one promotion. Yeah, one promotion. We need to give him storm attack two, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. And then we'll pull him back. We should almost be at the point where we can start taking shots at these dudes. 3.4% uh, chance of defeat. Not yet. I need to go ahead and pull the heavy artillery out of Fort Cod. I think that makes sense. So let's send the ranger back. These dudes cannot double move towards us through this terrain. Yeah, they cannot do that, so the heavy artillery are clear to move towards the west. I actually could have had them move right there, couldn't I? Eh, whatever. We don't have to be ultra, ultra efficient with movement on marathon speed. It is a little more forgiving of making movement mistakes. Got a missionary from a village down here. I'm going to send the missionary up to try to make some missions in the mixed tech land. Get them friendlier with us. It's going to take forever to get there, though. Oh, this dude has a 0.2% chance of defeat. I'll take that shot, sure. Although that does mean, yeah, this guy's gonna withdraw, but we'll get some experience out of it. And we can get the, we can get the expert prospector working on the silver, on the mineral resource down here because we got our border growth in Hammerstruck. Very nice indeed. My privateers, I'm actually gonna bring them back down south because the French seem to just love sailing ships down near my borders, like this Carrick right here. We have 6,716 gold. Now I could float this and hope for events like the Noble, where I spend about 6,000 gold for a really powerful statesman, or I could spend the money. Now I've almost got an armory up for gun production, and I do have the ability to make blades and tools so I can equip my own line infantry now. So I'm not too worried about that, but I do need more soldiers, just period. So maybe I'd actually want to get another gunsmith to supplement the one gunsmith that I have available. Ah uh, yes, great general, get off my boat. Fruit picker, get off my boat. Let's get him to work doing his thing in the lemon trees. Making plenty of food and fruit. And then do we have the expert farmer set up here? Or the lumberjack? I think the answer is no. We don't have enough law and order to really sustain more colonists. So after the armory and after the distiller's house, we really need to go for a village courthouse. Because we've got a bunch of fruit being made. I really want to make that fruit brandy for sale. As well as rum from sugar. And we have a little bit of sugar income in the colonies. Usually these things have a pretty good domestic demand as well. So we can sell them domestically if we'd like to do so. Which we absolutely will, because it's more money. Anyway, this great general could go on to a... I don't know if he can replace a brave lieutenant. Let's have him move west. We'll find out. But yeah, these guys gotta find somewhere else to go. 
I think the lumberjack is going to go north to Brown Cow, and the farmer is probably going to go help support the Red Bear temporarily. But yeah, do I save this much money, or do I spend it? I don't think this is actually a huge amount of money to float, and oh my god, we have so many immigrants. Oh my goodness. Oh, we're a renowned medic. I probably bought that one, didn't I? Yeah. Maybe we need more ships. Like, maybe that is really what we need. Although we should be fine with the Carrick and the Merchantman coming in in not too long. They'll be able to pick up everybody. Everybody. Yeah, I think we just float the money in case a quest comes up. And if the king asks us for money at this point, we'll probably just accept. Can't quite finish the town hall in Pearl Harbor because we got that stone problem. I got a ship that's tasked with bringing some stone to Pearl Harbor. But it's kind of hard to perfectly orchestrate everything when I take breaks between gameplay sessions. What shall we build in Pearl? We actually need a Chevro de Free. Let's do that next. We need some defensive structures just in case. Who's getting on the boat? Medic's getting on the boat. Baker's getting on the boat. Rancher and Carpenter. Everybody else can chill. Where do we send these dudes? Well, Baker... Well, Carpenter could go to Pearly Gates, but I don't need Pearly Gates that badly. Baker can go to Hammerstruck right away. Set up on a terrain for the attack on Yara. And terrain that does not favor the Carib. I think that is a very sensible choice. Oh, and it does look like the indentured servant went straight to a veteran instead of going through a free colonist first, I think. So using indentured servants as troops makes a lot of sense. And this Carrick is still sitting here, just casually undefended. Nope, not a big deal. You know what, I need to go ahead and clear out this stupid grizzly. So let's get the Colonial Militia and Brown Cow to take that out. I need the space for farming because I want to train this free colonist faster. So let's have the farmer do his thing temporarily here. Unfortunately, I cannot get a passenger ship to be in a tile that I can access this turn with the privateers. Oh, they're in a shallow coast, so they have plus 10% defensive bonus. I think we can still take it easy. Yeah, 0.10% chance of death. Let's push in. And let's go ahead. Let's enter the fog here. That'll leave us with one movement point to use. And let's send in the big guns first. And let's see who wins the fight. It's probably going to be us. Oh yeah, defeated. Good deal. Man, we got some ore for it. Why do they have 300 iron ore and a carrick down here when they could have just sold it to Europe if they wanted to. I do not understand that decision by the AI. I don't think they were trying to sell it to anybody else. That doesn't make any sense because of the very simple fact that you don't really want to buy ore. Putting up all the stone and clay in Pearly Gates, I'm going to take that down to Pearl Harbor. We need it more in Pearl Harbor at the moment. I do need to consider shipping some more stone in from Europe. Especially now that I have 9,000 gold, I need to spend about 3,000 of that gold if possible. An expert stone cutter might not be a bad idea. I don't think I have one of those anywhere in the colonies. Stone is going to get decently expensive as we use more of it and as we build more advanced buildings. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's pick up that expert stone cutter. Or we can pick up the fur trader. We can do both. We can do both. So stone cutter, fur trader. I want to get my coat industry up and running in not too long. That leaves us for 6,822 gold, which is exactly what I want, pretty much. We have undeserved mockery. Sardonic, boyish laughter makes you turn around. Who are those two brats cackling about? With fingers outstretched, they mimic the man's gait, holding their bellies while shouting crude taunts. Meanwhile, the man being harassed trudges along with on his bow legs, undaunted, without batting an eyelid. With a few quick steps, you cross the street and grab the ears of the cheeky badgers. Don't you know who this man is, what we owe him? This ranger is the most important horse breeder in our colonies. Without him, our soldiers would have to patrol the countryside on foot. The children bow their heads in shame. <laughs> I do think a lot of these pictures are quite nice. It's actually kind of made from in-game graphics stitched together, stitched together as far as I can tell. And we got that storage house in Mother Earl Pearl done. What shall we work on next? 
might want to go with a tavern to increase our well culture will pop in 13 turns either way tavern would get done in 13 turns exactly it would also provide one more cross per turn you know what? let's go ahead let's build the tavern for the cross production and the entertainment production after that we might want to consider getting a chapel built after that and then installing a preacher of some form alternatively i could start working towards pottery production but i'd have to get a potter i have a potter right no in this game i don't i don't think so okay now let's go for tavern all right we're in position to begin the assault on yara let's go ahead and just wipe these dudes out it should not be a problem at all two kills let's get another kill in and then final kill is a 2.4 strength let's do that on somebody that needs the experience really badly eh, let's just do it on this this guy should get the promotion baby got him now he should get yep he'll get the promotion good deal there's one more native left in the village 0.0% chance of death with a conquistador i'll take that shot looks like he might retreat though nope got him and village wiped out hey hey we've got the armory built in fort cod we just don't have any ore on hand to actually use that but i'll go ahead and i'll get the or C. now our crime goes up too high it's not that bad it just causes gold to be stolen high crime can cause unrest entertainment profits decrease domestic profits decrease happiness and immigration decreases so we need some ore shipped here first and then we can start thinking about that but uh, let's go ahead let's just mm, i could pull the you know, let's pull the indentured servant here that was making a rise we don't need him doing that then that fixes our crying problem gunsmith not actually doing anything at the moment but we'll get some ore pretty soon and you know what we've got some ore on the privateers here actually we can almost reach this turn we'll reach them next turn um so you can hurry things with money that's something that i haven't done that's something that i should actually consider more often i just i like to spend money to make money most efficiently so i'm not a big fan of hurrying items if i can help it unless the play style that i'm doing specifically depends on hurrying things like a certain kind of civilization civilization 6 for instance then it makes more sense Although 150 gold to finish the baker's house is not a bad deal. Of course, we don't actually have a baker to do his job. On site, at least. But yeah, hurrying is not a bad thing to do. Well, this would be 2,000 gold to hurry the tavern. And it would consume the, the wood that we have on hand. So it costs gold to hurry. And it costs gold to... It costs extra gold if you don't have the goods on hand, basically. So I could finish the Chevaux de Free this turn, actually. It would just cost some lumber. You know what? Let's go ahead. Let's finish it. We'll finish it this turn, get it done with, save us some time, and then move on to producing something else. Possibly a dock for more food income. Or we could set up our fur industry in Pearl Harbor here pretty soon. Actually, we need more law and order, so we're going to build a village courthouse here. Goodness, we're building courthouses in a number of locations simultaneously. A tavern and yeah this one would take 2,000 gold to rush I'm not gonna do that I'd really rather spend the money making um, getting more colonists basically to make more to make me more money but I do see reasons to hurry things from time to time anyway I'm going to take a quick instantaneous break to eat and then I'll be back later on today but for, for y'all it'll be instantly man so I lost about an hour of gameplay because I had a black screen bug where my OBS didn't record the visuals, just the audio. So I gotta replay a couple turns now. That is okay, that's okay. We have production planning. Astonished, the steward raises his head. Where shall we store the timber, my lord? The carter repeats his question. Well, what do you think, my good man? That's what I'm asking you. It's 50 stacks after all. It took 8 wagons to carry it. If we unload it, the pile will block the main street of this village. Well, smiles the steward, why don't you put it in the warehouse we built with your last shipment? I'm not sure what that reference is exactly, but here we have world-class work. You weigh the musket in your hands, pull out the ramrod, feel the firing pan, and smell the black powder bag. 
you nod with satisfaction. This specimen is as good as the weapons from home, this first musket made here in the new world in your first armory. Well then, uh yes, and we're offered some native mercs for 4,500 gold, considering that they're almost as powerful as veteran infantry soldiers. That's a pretty good price, but these Shoshone are far away from us, so I'm going to give them half of that money for a 50% chance of a relationship penalty of minus one. I don't care because they're far away. That's pretty lucky I got all the ore from that ship that I took down a couple of turns ago on the privateers here because now I can supply Fort Cod's armory for quite some time. And now we're producing eight muskets per turn, which is not enough in my opinion, but we'll rectify that soon enough. Militarily, I'm going to pull pretty much everybody back to heal. We'll just let them stand exactly where they're at. All right, this veteran infantry soldier, last time what I ended up doing is... This guy's at Ranger, so he's a really good Ranger. I cannot replace the brave lieutenant commanding him, so I will never get Ranger 3 no matter what. Maybe I want to use... I got this great general here. Maybe what I want to do is get a super medic. I don't think that would be a bad idea. Let's look at what the top tier of medic is exactly. Although that would require that I have a militia that can be attached to. And none of the militias have the, that option, only the heavy artilleries. Right, right, right. Let's look again at Medic 3, though, just real quick. Or oh, Surgeon 3, there we go. So it is 5%, well actually it's another 15% healing on top of everything else. So I think what I want to do this time actually is, uh, when I played before, I used the Great General on the heavy artillery. But this time I'm not going to do that. So this guy is going to get, what I went with was Veteran 3, so that he would be good at everything for this militia right here. So there we go, and we'll get him to heal. And then this force will basically march south, and then destroy Siberia next. That is the objective. Now this guy is a colonial militia that does not have Ranger. He has close combat promotions, which makes him good against pretty much everything else. Well, everything in general, I mean. So I think with him, what I did was I went with Storm Attack for plus 20... No, wait. I need Leadership 2. Let's do that instead. Was that an option on the other two? No, it was not. Gotcha. So yeah, I'd pick Leadership for more experience later on. And this Brig, I did have it standing around for supporting the military, but now it can actually do something else with its life. I think what I did was I had it start gathering all the food... Let me double check and see all my stockpiles and see if there's anything we're getting low on. Yeah, I think we should go ahead and start picking up the food with this one. Actually, I can probably send it back to Europe with a load. I think that is a reasonable choice. Mm. Yeah, we'll have it be a trade ship for now. Offloading the stone and clay in Pearl Harbor to finally finish that town hall. We got that done. We're working on a village courthouse at the moment, which you are actually in need of quite a bit. Alright, we've got a bunch of money to make selling off some goods. 6,000 gold worth of gems. Absolutely wonderful. So let's grab the hemp planter, stone cutter, fur trader. Do we want to grab one of these miners? Good question. I think our ore production right now is okay. So I'd rather grab something else. How expensive would a elder statesman be? 5,760 is not bad. We could really use more Liberty Bell production. Let me go ahead and let me risk the king asking me for money. Alright, I'll pay taxes, I'm fine with that. So the question is, do I invest in Liberty Bell production to get founding fathers to make my economy stronger, or do I invest directly in my economy to make my economy stronger so that I can later on invest in Liberty Bells? That is the big question to consider. I think what I would prefer to do is to get myself another gunsmith, because I need access to more weapons. So let's grab another expert gunsmith, or master gunsmith. 3,360 gold, that's pretty cheap. Actually, this hemp planter needs to go to Pearly Gates. So we'll send him to Pearly Gates. We'll drop off the hemp planter, most likely. And then sail south from there. That leaves us with about 6,000 more gold to spend. There is a West Indy man coming in four turns. We could spend the money on hurrying buildings which would like almost instantly complete them, it just costs a lot of money, so I don't normally like to do it. I'd actually like another distiller to work here at Fort Cod, so that's what I'm going to pick up next. 
I think if I go harder on economy now, then I can boost really hard in my Liberty Bell, Liberty Bell production a little bit later on. So we're going to put it off just a bit. Oh, and I could get food producers as well. That's right. Probably use another fisherman, although I might need another expert farmer. Yeah, I'm going to need another expert farmer for sure. So let's pick up another expert farmer. Can always use more food and we'll stay at above 6,000 for events and stuff like that. All right, we got the baker's house done in Hammerstruck. Now we're actually going to need to go with building a village courthouse, of course, because these things are necessary everywhere. Hopefully this free con is will upgrade into a proper master carpenter sooner rather than later. We shall have to see. And the commander of the town guard of our capital suggests that we build five more bakeries in our cities to supply the guard with better rations. He promises that this would bring many new volunteers to the guard. Uh, build five bakers houses to get some free town guards? Uh, that's a lot of hammers. I don't know about that. We finished the mine on the ore here, and what we're going to do is going to build a road to connect these two cities together more properly. With the crib mostly taken care of in our vicinity, we should be able to start running wagon trains up and down the coastline or inland to settlements that we might want to set up. I'm still kind of wondering whether or not we should push the mixed tech completely out, but the question about that is do I want their land badly enough? They have hemp fruit, lots of fruit, wood, they'll have cocoa, sugar, which I do want. I do want a lot of sugar. Oh yeah, coffee, that's right. Coffee is such a big thing, in, at least with this civilization, this English colonies. I'm not sure, I think the demand is the same for other colonies, but coffee is one of those things that everybody friggin' wants here, and they want a lot of it. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, long term, we're probably gonna crush the mixed tech and take everything here but for now I think it's easier just to push west take all this cotton indigo producing land a lot of these plains are really really good for providing food this plains tile has six food at the moment with an expert farmer that'd be something like that'd be 11 food I think based on the plus three production of food on land plus two from bonus resources so five plus six is eleven but with the health bonus of 10%, that'd be like 12. And then Rebel Sentiment on top of that. He could supply five colonists besides himself with enough food. It's very impressive. I'm really hoping that our domestic gun production ramps up enough to the point that we can settle and push out militarily as much as we need to about uh, purchasing weapons from Europe. And I do now realize that I need to check Threadbear's cloth factory to see if it needs a river because there are some buildings that do need rivers in this mod. So I found the textile mill but when I click it it turns out that the textile mill is the highest version of looks like the weaver shop. Yeah so the weaver shop now the weaver shop is the second level textile mill is third level gotcha. So no it does not require a river thankfully. Maybe it probably should. I know a lot of textile mills back in the day in New England, they used a lot of the rivers to power their mills. We were producing a crap ton of horses that we really don't need at the moment. So I decided to go sell them off in Africa to get the most money for them, which is 2,790. They sell for 10 here. They only sell for five in Europe. That's a lot of money. And I'm really, really considering buying some coffee here. They sell for, you can buy them for eight. Whereas you can buy them for 12 in Europe. So buying coffee here would really help supply us for the domestic demand. And that would more than double our money. Almost. Almost three times our money. Maybe two and a half. Let's go ahead. Let's buy a full load here. And then let's, I think I want to go ahead and maybe buy another load. Because we will make money no matter what. We just got to store the stuff. Let me go check. Oh, the cigars are cheap here too. Really, I'm like, let me go check out the domestic market real quick. Alright, so if you go to the domestic advisor F1, then you can go to domestic market and you can kind of look at all the goods that we have here. So I believe that the white number is the domestic market price. The number in the middle is the amount that are demanded per turn. And the number right here is the amount produced in that city. 
Yeah, right now for coffee, we want 5, 8, 10, 11 per turn. So that 300 coffee that I bought will last us about 30 turns. Uh, it does look like our current prices will only double our gold, but as they get happier, then they'll want to actually pay more. Salt is also quite heavily desired. Let's check out how much salt costs. Salt, by the way, you can only get from deserts, I think.